is it live? <laughs> Can you check? <laughs> I know right like, now. <laughs> Lord, it's been a minute. Okay. Hi everyone. This is okay. No, let me restart. Hi everyone. My name is Becky Park, and I have with me the wonderful Ashley Wheeler. You might know her as Ashley Wheeler of Eight, and I have her on my channel because we're going to talk about all things live sales. So first of all, Ashley, thank you so much for being here. Yay! I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Of course. Um, we were talking before about how I've had to reschedule on her like eight bazillion times. So I'm very happy to have her on because I feel like she's definitely one of the experts on this topic of live sales. And just to prove that, I thought, Ashley, we could start by I'm going to ask you some questions and okay. I want you to answer them. And then I'll kind of answer my take on those things as well, just to kind of show like how different we are, I think, in our thinking and like the perspectives that we have when it comes to live selling so that people understand that we are not cut from the same cloth when it comes from this, which is the cool thing, I think, to hear multiple you know, perspectives. So first of all, how long have you been reselling? I've been reselling since 2017. Oh my gosh. Wait, me too? I, I think me too. When, when in 2017? It was right when I had just started a new job at an investment firm. So I want to say it was like February of 2017. Okay. I think it was um, like December of 2017, like really? basically the very last two days of the year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've been reselling for relatively the same amount of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what platforms do you sell on with like traditional reselling? Like you photograph, you list, you, you know, wait for the sale to come in. That would be eBay and Poshmark. That was kind of the only two that I can juggle like at one time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am on too many platforms. I'm on like Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Kid is in, which I probably can drop at this point, Depop, my own website. I don't know. And talk to us a yeah. little bit too about like what your different responsibilities are because you do have a very busy and full life. So like uh, both family and with work? Yes. Yes. Okay. All of the things. So at this point, 27 or um, from 2017 to fall of 2019, I was juggling a full time job. At that time, we had six kids at home and I was getting up at four o'clock in the morning to get items listed or prep oh the items God. that had sold the day before. My lunch breaks were either my listing time or packing those orders. And then my Saturdays were when I was photographing, like I figured out how to make it work because mm -hmm. that side income allowed us to take our kids to Disneyland for 10 days and be down there for my sister-in-law's wedding and just get caught up in debt and a lot of other things. But we really started to see how my husband and I really started to see how valuable this was and how much fun it was for us. Mm -hmm. And so I started my Instagram, started my YouTube channel and started to work towards trying to make this my full-time income. At this point, fall of 2019, I was able to step away from the job, which was amazing because it was right before 2020 where my kids wouldn't have had a daycare to go to. They didn't have mm -hmm. a school to attend and I needed to be on standby to take care of them. So being able to be full-time as a reseller at that point allowed for that flexibility. And by mm -hmm. then we had, I think five kids at home. They start, they started to graduate high school over the course of the last few years. So I can't oh, remember wait, exactly. On. You have, you have children that have graduated from high school. Yes. So we have five kids that have already graduated from high school and then we have three at home right now. Okay. So um, at some point I'm going to have to do a separate interview with you on just like how you maintain your youthful glow and like how that's crazy. I, I knew like you had a lot, I just thought they were all really little kids or like maybe oldest was like middle school. That is insane. Goals right there. Amazing. Okay. For real. That's going to be like its own little <laughs> interview at some point. We need all of the secrets. Holy cow. Okay. I'm so sorry. Keep going. I was very distracted by that. No, that's really fine. And to give a little bit of back history on that in 2011, my husband and I got together. He had five kids from a previous marriage. So about the time that we got together, his youngest was in third grade. His oldest was a freshman. So over the course mm -hmm. of the last like 12 years, we've raised them upwards. And then it's kind of crazy because now our oldest yeah. of the younger three is like the same age that his older kids were. So I'm like doing it all over again. But yes, yeah. we've raised middle school, high school, babies, oh all the things God. at this point. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So 
at this point, I'm juggling the three kids that are at home and they have activities that they're doing. And really, and this would be a good thing that we can kind of dive more into with um, talking about live shows in general. But I started to realize how much time I was putting towards the reselling business. And yes, it generated really fantastic months for us. But there was a lot of sacrifice with my family. Mm -hmm. And we realized that mm -hmm. that wasn't where we wanted to continue moving forward at this point in like the season of life that we're in, especially, I don't know mm -hmm. if you had seen it, Becky, but my mom found out that she was diagnosed with breast cancer in November of last oh, year. So, so a lot of that, we kind of put a halt on like our business. I was like, yeah, we can keep mm -hmm. scaling. We can keep making these 25, $20,000 months, but I'm putting all of my time towards life sales. Mm -hmm. And that just doesn't make sense for our season right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but you're right. Like reselling and different ways of reselling offers a lot of flexibility that like your full-time job that you had in 2017, 2019, probably just wouldn't be able to give you, you know, as no, understanding no. as those people want to be, but yeah, yeah, they can't just kind of let you do what you want when you want. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So to answer that question, um, I also am a mom. I have two kids and it feels like eight, but it's not, it's two. <laughs> and um, I, I have a full-time job that I still do as a high school choir teacher. So we've led similar lives, but right now you're doing the full-time thing and awesome. Right. Okay. Where do you do your live sales on? What platforms? So as of right now, I'm doing it on Poshmark solely because again, kind of trying to juggle two platforms, I really mm -hmm. saw when it came to live sales, you need to have consistency and you mm -hmm. need to be able to kind of, gather that customer base. And it's really hard to be mm -hmm. like, Hey, I'm over here. Follow me over here. Hey, I'm over here. Yeah. Follow me over here. Like they do. Yeah. They have two different customer bases, some kind of intertwined together, but mm -hmm. it just made more sense for me to focus on one and really build that up to mm -hmm. make it worth the amount of items that I was trying to sell per sale. Yeah. Awesome. But you do have experience on whatnot. Yes. That's where you started live sales, right? Yeah, I started that. I want to say it was July. Yeah, it was like 4th of July, right around there is when I got accepted. And I did that mm -hmm. from July all the way to the January of this year. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so I've tried whatnot. I've actually still never done a Poshmark live sale. So it'll be really mm -hmm. interesting to hear from you. I know I just, it's like I did the training and then I was like, yeah, I'm yeah. tired. <laughs> I don't want to do it. So it'll be interesting <laughs> to hear kind of your perspective on the differences between the two, what you prefer. And it seems like you said right now you're predominantly on Poshmark. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm sure this changes, but on average, how many live sales do you do a week? As of right now, I'm only doing one, but back history mm -hmm. on that, I've been doing this for almost a year now. And I was at one point doing five sales a day or five sales a week. I was oh doing uh, 12 days of Christmas. So I did one every single day. So I built a wow. customer base that mm -hmm. now I feel like I was able to kind of step back and go, you know what, I'm just going to be consistent with at least one a week, potentially mm -hmm. do maybe two, but that's kind of where the extent of my time is at right now. I really enjoyed doing three a week, but it's still, it just takes a lot of work to do. It does, which I think not a lot of people realize, um, but there's a lot of work that goes into it beforehand and then even, you know, during the sale itself. And, and I'll, I have some questions about that coming up, but I think I've done like eight sales total. <laughs> so like, again, we're coming from very little real life experience to someone yeah. who has done just a bunch. So I think it'll be really helpful to mainly hear from you. Um, and just to maybe hear some side comments from me being like, meh, 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 whatever, <laughs> but um, they really, if anyone's here, it's to hear you talk about it. So, all right. So that's kind of where we're coming from. Let's start mm -hmm. with um, what got you into live sailing? I know it was kind of all the craze at one point, but what made you decide, you know what, I'm going to try to onboard. I want to see, you know, what I can do with this thing. So well, for me, actually, my life sales experience goes even before the craze happened. Uh, a few years ago, I've always been very involved in like our local chamber of commerce, um, community events and different things in that regard. And so even though I've been selling items online, a piece of me was kind of like, but it'd be really great to give back to my community and have a great way for me to have amazing products 
just to the community that I am with locally. It's great mm-hmm. to have things go international, but I live in a rural area and a lot of the brands I'm selling online, they don't have access to. So mm-hmm. I started a Facebook group. And, oh, gosh, I want to say this was like 2018, maybe, maybe 2019. And I was trying to do the live sales there. I had to do all the marketing. I had to come up with mm-hmm. all the payment processing. I had to schedule a way in to meet up with these people or try to send it their way. And it wasn't oh. a bidding opportunity. And people had to watch the full live sale to see what I was going to have. Of course, I could make posts of like, here's what's going to be in the show. But there was a lot of questions about what's my, what sizes do you have? Like, mm-hmm. there was nothing. People were basically just watching a YouTube video, not knowing what was going to come next. And so yeah. time wise, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. I did that for as long as I could. And I was like, okay, this isn't really making like, is a lot of effort for not a whole lot of payback. Mm-hmm. Um, in 20, I want to say it was 21. I had uh, another app reach out to me. They were called Galaxy. And they were more of an established website that people could go online and watch a live sale. It had this storefront. And so people could load items so they could see what it was that you were going to have. The one downside to that was one, you had to schedule with the company when you were going to do a live sale because they only had so much bandwidth to handle Mm -hmm. as many shows at one time. And then the other thing was it wasn't a bidding opportunity. What I mean by that is like posh shows and whatnot, you start something at $5, people have 30 seconds and they can bid up the item. Mm -hmm. I find there to be a lot more value in life sales doing that versus, hey, I have this item and you're like trying to give them good deals. So you're like 10 bucks, like, yeah. Is that going to work for anyone? Um, yeah. So I would do like an hour show and only make like $100. And I'm like, the amount mm-hmm. of effort for me to prepare for this show just doesn't yeah. make sense with the outcome. Um, mm-hmm. And then about the time that Whatnot came onto the scene, I was seeing it happen May, April, May of last year with just some of my friends. And I kind of just did this. I was like, you know what? Galaxy didn't work. So I'm just going to yeah. sit back and watch everyone for a second. Like, I don't want to invest in something and tell everyone this is a really great opportunity if it really doesn't make sense. Yeah. And because that's what I kind of felt like with Galaxy. I was promoting it and I was like, this isn't going nearly as well as I thought it was going to. That's why I got into it in July. I had seen, you know, Ashley Hustle at Home Mom, Carissa Daily Refinement doing it around like May. And they were the ones that I was just keeping tabs on of like, is this actually going to continue to have follow through? Um, Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my story with the live sales. That's really cool. And I feel like you know, people always discount past experiences of just like making things happen or just really anything. Like even um, the few times that I've gone live, like people are like, you're just able to like keep talking. And like, I'm like, yeah, I teach. Like, this is what I have to do. Like I have to keep kids who don't want to be there engaged, you know, and you don't realize how those past experiences are going to always help you out in um, your current one. So that's really cool. And it really reminds me of kind of like those MLM companies that would, you know, like LuLaRoe, like those people would go live and try to sell these things. And, you know, yeah, like what you're describing, the live shows that you do on both Poshmark and whatnot, you sell primarily clothing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of accessories, a little bit of shoes. I also tried kids clothing, tried Mm -hmm. men's clothing as well. And I really landed on what made sense for us was primarily women's clothing. Yeah. And um, I guess, can we get into a little bit like, because, you know, people who have done live shows, they know this. They know that for the most part, it's not as simple as just like pressing, you know, go live and then you just have like some random things and you're like, oh, let me show you. Can you kind of talk us through the process of how to put on a successful live show? What happens, you know, even in the days leading up to a show, um, if you could kind of walk us through that, especially for those that are itching to try, but maybe Mm -hmm. don't understand what that process looks like. Honestly, just to uh, front load that, what I'm about to say is, uh, Don't have analysis paralysis. If this information starts to overwhelm you, Mm. just hit record and get the first one out of the way. 
Um, yeah. But I think as you do your sales, you're going to start to find what ebbs and flows. Do you like to do the, I just got a box of stuff. Let's pull it out and see what I, you know, I have to sell. Um, do you want to have more of a preloaded show where you have done the research to figure out what the retail prices are? Um, I did notice on whatnot, I felt like, you know, you really do have a customer base of a lot of resellers. So retail doesn't always mean a whole lot to people. You're mm -hmm. like, this free people piece is $78. And people are like, yeah, but that's not, <laughs> it's not going to look like that online. But if you say yeah. something like that on a Poshmark show, you have a lot more customers over there and they're going to go, oh yeah, like 78 is the retail and you're starting this at 15. Like that's a huge win for me. So mm -hmm. I think that you have to figure out what type of show you want to do. Uh, I have done fully loaded shows. What I mean by that is I have thought about what items do I want in my show. I have them all hanging up on a clothing rack. I've numbered all of them because it's easier for me. If I have three Nike items in a show, I don't want to get to the end with my packing slip and go, uh oh, what Nike piece do they have? Mm -hmm. The numbers allow me to know, okay, it was number five Nike. So I just grabbed that off of the clothing rack. Um, and then I've also, you know, added in photos before. I haven't added photos in before. Like I've played around with all different styles to see what people like the most. And I mm -hmm. feel like you do have to have somewhat of a thought process of how you want to kind of like what you were saying, like the days leading up, if you're doing mm -hmm. like a boho style show, you're going to have to think about what kinds of items are bohemian to put into that show and then mm -hmm. be able to market it. If that's something you have like Instagram or YouTube or like TikTok, um, you can market it. It's a boho show and here's the brands that are going to be in it. So you do have to have somewhat of a thought process beforehand mm -hmm. to determine that. But I also think there's a little bit of art of surprise. There's a reason why unboxings are one of the most popular videos in any category on YouTube. It's because people want to see what's next. It's a little bit yeah. of an entertainment aspect. Um, mm -hmm. I've had fully loaded shows before where I feel like I have a lower view count. And I'm like, well, why is that? Well, because everyone was able to check in the show yeah. and go, okay, nothing's really interesting. And I'm just going to bounce out of this or my size mm -hmm. isn't in here. Whereas if you do have a little bit of an artist surprise, then people are like, I have to stay because I want to see what's next. Uh, yeah. So it really just press record, get started and start to figure out what customers are you attracting? What flow do you prefer? What, how much time do you have prior to get a show ready? That will also determine how you can load a show. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Um, just like when people ask me questions about like YouTube or something, I'm like, I, you know, some of these questions I can't answer because I'm not you and I don't know what's going to work for you and what's going to feel most natural for you. So I like yeah. the idea of try all of the things and see what works for you and figure out your right. own flow and your own system. Um, but it seems like you have tried a few things. What would you say you have found, at least for yourself, to be the most successful practices when it comes to live selling? I like to keep a flow. I personally don't like a lot of dead air. So mm -hmm. even though it's fun to do run or pass style shows, what I've learned is there are some times that are people watching my shows and I'm on mute so they can't hear me. So if I'm mm -hmm. holding this piece, I'm like, do you want me to run this or pass this? They have no idea what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And maybe I put it down and they're like, whoa, whoa wait, I wanted that. Yeah. I didn't give them an opportunity to bid on that. So if mm -hmm. I do a run or pass style show, what I do is everything gets ran. And if it sells, then I add the number that I was like, at that point, maybe say I was, you know, I had number five bidding. I'm showing this item. Someone bought it. Okay. Now number five goes on that. Hainer. Let's go to mm -hmm. number six. Oh, this, this item didn't sell. Okay. That's going back on the clothing rack. Let's grab the next item. Oh, that sold. Okay. Number six is going on there. So mm -hmm. I do like that style show. Uh, another thing that I've done on Poshmark that I feel like is my sweet spot at this point is preloading a show. And by that, I mean, Poshmark allows us to do what's called a quick list. And all they ask for is for you to fill out the title, what the category of the item is and what the size is. You don't have to add in any other details. You don't have to add in photos. So I like to do that. And that way I can tell people, hey, this item is going to be free people. It's a size medium, but you have no idea what it's going to be. Could be pants, mm -hmm. it could be a dress, it could be something. So people will like the items that are their size because mm -hmm. they want to come back later to see what that piece is. There's still that mm -hmm. element of artist surprise, but at the same time, I've curated the show. And it also, mm -hmm. I don't have to go back and have 
so much time to add photos to every single listing. I don't have to worry about adding additional details. I have a ruler close by. So if anyone wants me to do measurements, I can do it while I'm live. But if I preload a show like that, where I just put in numbers, I put in what the brand is, and I put in the size, it will take me about an hour to load 50 items on my computer. That's the part that I think a lot of people don't understand. It takes a long time. And that's part of the reason why I decided not to do live shows anymore. And my favorite kind of live shows to do are the ones that you described where it's like, I'd get like a thread up box and I would unbox and be like, do you want me to yeah. run it? Okay. You know, and because it required yeah. zero time up front of like preloading um, the items in. But that I think is a really great tip of like, you don't have to go so far as taking pictures of the items and doing the measurements and doing all that kind of stuff um, and leaving a little element of surprise. That's really cool. This shows how little I even like watch live shows. <laughs> like you're like <laughs> someone's like, pass and I'm like, what, what is this new? You know, like, I just like, this is all new terminology to me because, because I just like, don't like engage, you know? So it's, it's very interesting to see how much it's evolved even from the time that I kind of like decided I'm not really doing this anymore. Um, so well, for you, point, you mentioned <clears throat> that you like to do that. And I used to watch your thread up unboxing shows, but mm -hmm. if you remember, I would like put in the comments, like in the live, I'm like, I'm on a treadmill right now. Like even for me, it was really difficult to be like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I want that. Like, yes, run mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. it, that is something as a customer, as well as customers telling me, I've learned that any item that you're showing in a show you should run it because you never mm -hmm. know who's on mute. You never know who's doing the dishes and would love to just push the button really quick to bid on it, but they can't mm -hmm. put a comment in the comment section. Just because people aren't talking doesn't mean they're not engaged. Mm -hmm. Which is huge too, because you know I remember doing a show or two where I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody's saying anything. I am just talking to my laptop. This is the right? most awkward thing. And I'm just trying not to like go into full panic. But like you said, yeah not most people don't have that much luxury of time that they can just sit there like all day on their phone and yeah. just stare at it. Like they're multitasking. They're doing something else. Mm -hmm. so that's a very good reminder. Um, so you kind of have mentioned good shows versus bad shows. What would you say for you? And again, I like how earlier you shared like, you know, analysis paralysis. Like if this is like scaring you or whatever, like stop listening, just, you know, just, just do it. Um, and in the same way, I'm going to ask you to share kind of some of your numbers. And for some people, it might be discouraging of like, oh my God, like I'm never going to get there or I've never done that before. But also, like you said, you've been one doing this for a while and two, you've been very consistent. So you've built right. a consistent customer base. So if mm -hmm. you could kind of share like what people could be working towards, what does a good show look like for you in terms of like number of attendees and also maybe like how many items you sell through, maybe how much profit you're making in those shows? Um, what's, what's good for Ashley? So... Poshmark is so different compared to whatnot. I felt like I could have 19 people in a room on whatnot and nothing would sell. I could have 19 people in a Poshmark show and have a really good turnout because people want to buy. They're interested. Mm -hmm. They're actually very interested in what it is you're purchasing. Whereas sometimes I felt like whatnot people were watching to get trained on how mm -hmm. to do a show. And I still mm -hmm. feel like you see some of that on Poshmark too, but let's just create the, or let's just see the reality with this. Whatnot has been around. I think it's like been three years at this point. Poshmark's been around for 11, 12. Mm -hmm. So their customer bases are widely different. Will that change? Yeah. Will they grow? I think absolutely. Um, but at the time when I was doing it, you know, 19 people really didn't make sense. I can have yeah. anywhere from like that 18, 19, person um, amount of views all the way up to 150. It just depends mm -hmm. on how much I marketed it in advance. Was this a spur of the moment show? Uh, there's just, there's a lot of different things that play into that. Uh, maybe the, the quality, the type of product that I'm also selling. I will typically on average have 35 to 60 people in a show. And I've had sold out shows. I've had shows where there's been 10 things left over after I've listed and shown 60 items. Uh, overall, a profitable show for me 
is like, I want to at least make like $350 or $400. If I am taking time away from my family, which at this point I do my Wednesday show at 515 Pacific Standard. So I am taking time in the evenings from my family. I want to make it worthwhile. And my $350 shows is like, I've done an audit of totes in my inventory that were like stuff that was listed on my Poshmark and eBay stores. And I've had them for a year. So I pulled them out of the inventory and I decided to put up a show like that. And those are mm -hmm. typically like a clear out show for me. So I'll start things at like $8, $10. And some things will get bid up. But I've definitely learned that there's a customer on live shows that isn't always like searching for certain things. Like, for example, if we think of boutique items, it's really hard to search in the search engine of eBay and Poshmark. Mm -hmm a boutique mm -hmm. piece, but you can describe a boutique piece really well in a live show and like say how you're going to style it. And that might mm -hmm. be more likely to sell there than if it was just sitting in your closet. That's kind of what I mean about there's different customers on like yeah. the different parts of the platforms. Uh, but I will normally have a show that will be anywhere from 800 to $1,500 with just doing two to three hours of work. That's amazing. Yeah. And you know, I think even just you describing like why people will sit there for a live show versus just searching for something online. Um, you know, there, there's a whole like channel on TV dedicated to shoppers like this, right? Like where that's what people do, like the home shopping network or um, what's the one? It starts with a Q. QVC. With the QVC. <laughs> yes. We're like <laughs> people get like lots of time to like do exactly what it is that live sellers do. And, and there are people that that's what they want to watch and do with their time. And it's just kind of like a fun way to spend an hour or two. Um, and I think a lot of people write that off because they're like, I would never do that. Yeah, but you're not selling to yourself. You're selling to people right. who actually would sit there for something like that. So that's fascinating to kind of hear, you know, what for you is um, a good sale, what's maybe on the lower end, higher end. Um, and, and I do think too, like how long would you say specifically on Poshmark, it took for you to get to that point where you were making a steady at least $350 in a show? Because I think some people throw on the towel when they do their first show and they're like, nobody came and I sold zero things. <laughs> this is not for right. me. How long did it take you to get to this stage? Yeah, honestly, that's been something I've been saying. I've been doing a mini series on my YouTube channel right now to teach people the different steps of basically running a live show on Poshmark. And that's one of the first things that I said in that mini series was mm -hmm. do not do like give yourself permission right now to do more than one show. Do not make a decision after your first yeah. show because the customers don't know you yet. You're not consistent mm -hmm. yet. And you need to at least have, I would like to say a month under your belt, maybe even six to eight weeks, but that's all dependent on how many live shows are you doing those times? Like mm -hmm. if you did one out of eight weeks and you're like, this didn't work for me. Well, no, you didn't actually, like if you did yeah. one a week for eight weeks, then make a decision about live sales. Cause it's going to take a minute. You have to think about when you first started your Poshmark store, when you first started your eBay store, when did you start making consistent sales? Was it the first 50 items? Was, was it the first 100? How long did it take you to get to those listings? Yeah. It's the same concept in life sales. It's just you have to be on. And I think that's what a lot of people don't like is having to hit record and talk to a camera. Yes. And again, kind of, you know, going back to the idea of prior life experience helping out with things like live sales you you have a youtube channel you've had one for a while take a moment right now to shout it out too so people know where to find you where is what is your youtube channel what is your instagram what are all the things so i go by ashley wheeler of eight on instagram i have ashley wheeler eight on youtube and i just started facebook as well because one of my friends was doing my marketing analysis and she's like your age demographic that follows you ashley would serve you well to be on Facebook. So mm. here we are, we're over there as well. Yeah, And I, I try to do the TikTok as well, but everything's Ashley Wheeler of eight or Ashley Wheeler eight, number eight. Awesome. And if you guys want to find Ashley on um, Whatnot or Poshmark, check out her shows, not just to be trained by her, let's, you know, support, <laughs> like buy something. But um, if you want to find her, uh, those are those handles there as well. Um, Awesome. Also, oh, I did, I did want to ask, because you had mentioned it, how do you determine your start prices uh, for your live shows? You had kind of thrown out numbers like $8, 15 you know, whatever. But um, yeah. I, I've heard 
resellers getting upset at people who start things at like three dollars or but what is kind of your philosophy when it comes to that my philosophy is you do not have to start your things on whatnot at one dollar you do not need to start your things on poshmark at three dollars a lot of people see others doing that and think that that's what they need to do but then they also that's typically when i get messages on instagram that people are like how are people making money in live sales like i'm seeing mm -hmm. what these things are selling for and the thing is you don't know what someone's cost of goods is do they have mm -hmm. access to a goodwill outlet are they paying a dollar two dollars for an item, maybe even 50 cents, 70 cents. Was the stuff free to them? Did they get a really good wholesale lot that allowed the cost of goods to be around $5? Like you don't know. All you know is what you're paying for your items. So mm -hmm. I have times where I have purchased from wholesale where I'm paying $13 per item. I'm paying $15 for item. I think the highest I've ever spent was $18 per piece. Actually, I take that back. I got purses one time and it was $20 a piece. So I'm not going to start my items mm -hmm. at a lower cost where I'm going to lose money. My starting mm -hmm. price is going to be at least me making my money back. Maybe 15 cents or like 50 cents off. But that also is dependent on are people buying stuff in the show? Okay, could I kind of play around with maybe lower starts to keep people engaged and attracted? Like you do have to have a plan going into your shows, but also just know there could be a flow. You might have one show where you have over 150 people. You might have another show where it's 50 people. So always just keep a pulse of what's happening in your store mm -hmm. or your show mm -hmm. and determine what your starting bids are going to be based on that. Um, my, yeah. when I was saying like my $8, that's like my closet clear out. And I do that because I'm pulling stuff that has been in my closet for like mm -hmm. a year at least, or maybe even six to eight months. And I know that I got this at the bank or I paid $5 on this item. And so that's when I'll start things at like maybe $8 on Poshmark. Mm -hmm. um, obviously the fees are different between whatnot and Poshmark. So you got to look at what the fees are. You got to look at what you paid cost per goods and then determine based on there. I have a friend who does boutique items and she pays like 20 to $25 per like dress Ooh. or item. Yeah. And she starts her items at like 35 to $40 and mm -hmm. they still sell. She mm -hmm. makes good money in those shows, but mm -hmm. you, your customers will be comfortable with whatever you start prices at. You just have to be comfortable with starting your prices at that point. Yeah. Yeah. No, a lot of people have gotten burned because they start things so low and it's for much less than they purchase the item for. So speaking of sourcing and um, just being wise about how you price things, do you source differently for whatnot than you do for your regular reselling because you are still selling on eBay and Poshmark as a regular yeah. seller. Um, so do you have a different strategy? Do you source different kinds of items? Do you only list, you know, like the things that you get at the bins um, for your live sales? Can you talk us through a little bit how you get inventory for your live sales? I've been playing around with a lot of different ways. My husband and I, like, so we live in a rural area, as I mentioned. And so our Goodwill outlets are in Portland, which is about three and a half to four hours away from us, depending on which ones we go to in Portland. Mm -hmm. And so we'll do vacate, like, little day or road trips is what I'm trying to say. And we've done hotel pop-ups where it's like, we just got this stuff from the bins today. Like let's show, let's have a fun sale. And um, we've ran shows like that before. I've also... Doing live sales made me realize I need to have more inventory at my disposal. Mm -hmm. And I had to move around with different wholesalers and places to get pallets before. But there was always like a fear of stepping into that. When I did live sales, I had to go head first into that because I had no choice but to keep up with the demand of the amount of inventory I was selling. And so mm -hmm. I took a lot of risks. I definitely lost money at times. I had wholesalers try to scam me. I, oh. I've dealt with all the different things, but that came at the level of me trying to scale my business and taking risks because no one's going to give you their source. And even if you do know a source, that's a good source. If I'm on the East coast and some are on, or if I'm on the West coast and some are on the East coast, mm -hmm. maybe the shipping and handling <laughs> for the item get to me doesn't even make sense. So mm -hmm. I started really picking up with trying to do wholesale 
more because I had live sales and I still do a mixture in both of my sales. I really do like to have new merchandise, but I also love to sprinkle in pre-loved like thrifted pieces, especially if it goes with the aesthetic of whatever like new merchandise I have, because mm -hmm. I feel like they typically will sell because there's already that like common thought process of like, oh, these are really nice items, newer pieces. I still let people mm -hmm. know I just close with their pre-love, but I think there's something psychological where people are like, the majority of this is new. I don't know. It works yeah. for me. Yeah. So you find that new items, new with tags, um, does better for live shows on Poshmark than the thrifted stuff. I think it depends on what product you have on hand. Mm -hmm. If you can get access to um, pre-owned Lily Pulitzer and Lou Lemon on a regular basis, you're going to have good live sales. I do not have access to those kinds mm -hmm. of brands, but I can get some wholesale lots that might be brands that are people that are people are looking for. So I do a pretty good, consistent, like study what the market is doing right now, what's trending right now, popping into some other people's sales to see what is selling quickly, mm -hmm. and then trying to find ways that I can get that inventory myself. I know some people who do pre-loved designer purses, and I wish I could get that much designer pieces, yeah. but I just can't because those sales are like cream of the crop. Like you can get a lot of money in those shows, but that makes sense because the resale values yeah. of those are so high. So whatever yeah. inventory you have, I really can't speak on like, this is mm -hmm. how you should do it because we all live in different parts of the country that have access to other things. Yeah. And, and I want to take a quick pause to just kind of focus on to like, you know, I I've gotten a lot of like comments on YouTube videos or on Instagram or just heard a lot of people just talking about how sales have dried up and, um, you know, live sales are crap, reselling is crap, like all this stuff. But the, the overwhelming, like, thing I can't help thinking when I hear you talk is none of your success is accidental and none of it is, like, none of it was handed to you. Like, you hustle. You work really hard. Even when you were talking about, like, you know, when you had a full-time job, like, you were waking up at four in the morning to list and you were shipping during your lunch period, you know, and even now, like you're talking about, you know, the closest bins is like three and a half, four hours. Like, I think a lot of people always want to discount other people's success by being like, well, they live here or they do that, or, you know, they have these connections. And, but, you know, you have allowed yourself to go through the growing pains to get to where you are now. You've allowed yourself to try different wholesalers. No one handed you a sheet of paper that had all of the best wholesalers. Like you had to just do it and reach out and get scammed or, you know, just kind of like fall flat on your face multiple times to get to where you're at. And I think that's the difference between someone like you and someone who isn't experiencing as much success is you're willing to put the work in. And that's what people like don't understand a lot of the time is it's not that it's easier. It's not that they're luckier. It's that they're willing to put the work in. They're willing to maybe sleep a little less sometimes. They're willing to, you know, like forsake time out with friends or what, you know, and that's at the end of the day, sometimes what it takes and people don't want to put that sacrifice in. So thank you for sharing like a very real look at what reselling is like, because it's not easy. It's not just like the simple thing that anyone and everyone can do, because if it were, then anyone and everyone could, would be doing it, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you have anything to like add to me fluffing you up like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. Do you agree that you are a wonderful, hardworking person? <laughs> no, I, I do agree, though. I, I had that vision when I first started this, how fun it was, how creative I mm -hmm. could be. And I just made this. I wanted this. I really yes. wanted this lifestyle. And more importantly, like my anchor has always been my family. I was mm -hmm. at a marketing job that I adored and I was planning to retire with them so much to the point that the creative director was teaching me up because I was going to start learning how to do the commercials for this place. Like I loved it. But when my mom was taking care of my grandma and they lived like 45 minutes away from my work and she was in late stages of Parkinson's, that was that anchor in me that said, I love this but my family is more important and I'm not mm -hmm. going to get to the end of my life saying, I wish I worked more. I'm going to get to mm -hmm. the end of my life saying, I wish I had more time. And so mm -hmm. that's been my anchor, even with this reselling is the flexibility. Now I'm really operating at a place where I am doing this part-time. Yes, I'm making a full-time income, but 
my family, I'm a full-time mom and Mm -hmm. I love to cook. I love to garden. I love to organize things in our home. And so we really are making more of a pivot because I realized even though I could shoot for the stars with all the live sales that we were doing Mm -hmm. last year, it wasn't worth the amount of time I was sacrificing in the season of my life. And Mm so I'll keep building this, but I was finally okay with like doing, doing this as a marathon not trying to do yeah. this as a spot. I love that. And and like you said, this is one of those rare things that allows us to do things in our time, decide, hey, this is a season where we got to just buckle in and like just do four live sales a day, you know, whatever it takes to bring in money because we've got this emergency, whatever, you know, and yeah. there's no other job like it that I can really think of. So that's, that's awesome. Um, no, the amount so, of inventory, the amount of like, I, I've seen people that do electronics on eBay and make a hundred thousand dollars in 90 days. Like, what is your expertise? What is the thing yeah. that you love doing? Like, that's what I love mm-hmm. about reselling is it really can be whatever anyone wants to create it to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's why I think it's important too. going back to what you had said earlier about there's no right way to do it. There's no like, you have to follow this formula, you know, watch what Ashley does day in day out in her sales and replicate it. Exactly. That will actually lead to your demise because you're not Ashley, right? So it's, yeah, it's all about one, like you said, what is your expertise? If you are a sneakerhead, just sell sneakers and you'll do amazing. And people will come to realize, Oh, this is someone who really knows what they're talking about when it comes to sneakers. If it's electronics, like you said, and and not only that, but it's much more fun for yourself because you can be yourself. You don't, you know, you're not struggling with this imposter syndrome of like, Oh, she told me to sell clothes and I don't know anything about this. And I don't know how to describe (laughs) it. Yeah. It's just more enjoyable for you too. If like you're selling something that you know a lot about and love. So I think that's, um, that's a very wise tip as well. Um, so you still do regular reselling as well, but what are things about live selling that you prefer over traditional reselling? Are there any? Yeah, actually there is. Um, I love that I can, actually talk with my customers in a live show, Mm -hmm. you know, people can comment in my posh closet or on eBay, but there's still a separation. It kind of, I think for people, it's still like if they were purchasing something off of Amazon, it doesn't feel like a person yet. Live Mm -hmm. sales is basically the face behind the brand. People suddenly Mm -hmm. can buy into you. And for example, my returns, when I have had people reach out They'll be like, I don't want to cause a problem or I'm sure you overlooked this, Ashley. And I'm like, thank you. You actually Mm -hmm. know my heart. You know who I am. You know, because you've been in my shows, you see who Mm -hmm. I am. And so because of that, the return policy is so much easier because people are like, I'm sure you didn't mean to miss this, but there is a stain on this. Can I return? I was like, absolutely. Yeah, I totally missed that. Thank you for that being your first reaction. Whereas like, some eBay returns, people are like, how dare you? You're trying to scam yeah. me. And I'm like, no, do you, you don't know me. You have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, that's one of the things I really do like about life sales is I feel like people are really going to get to know who you are as a person, mm-hmm. really what your brand is. Do you have a certain aesthetic? I think of that like empty hangers, who is always like the bohemian vintage shot. Like people yeah. know when they're going to go into that show, that's the vibe it's going to be. And people will buy into that. Like that's what they want. So I mm-hmm. love, I love that. I love that people can get to know me. I love that I can interact with people. When I was doing my 12 days of Christmas in December, I had people that just found out that they were diagnosed with cancer. One opened up about that later. There was another person that was taking care of their father, which was also going through Parkinson's now I think about it. And um, there was another one who got in an accident, but they like, they opened up to us in live sales and said, thank Mm -hmm. you so much for doing these. You bring so much joy. And I say like plural, because my husband was doing the sales Mm -hmm. with me. Um, but they're like, you make me laugh. You make me so happy. I'm always so grateful to be in your shows. And I just, I love that relationship that not only is it giving back in a way to me, but it's also giving so much more to them, even if they don't buy anything in a show. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said earlier, there's kind of an entertainment aspect tied to live shows that people don't get if they're shopping the traditional way on Poshmark. And part of it is human connection. And there are people out there who are far more comfortable connecting with a stranger over the internet versus Mm -hmm. opening up to even people in their family about what they're going through or how they're feeling. And and they just need an escape. And 
we know from looking at the numbers of consumerism that shopping is an escape for people. And even just yeah. to like provide that power of like, you know, not only do you get to shop, but like you can be with people who are going to love on you and just mm -hmm. like allow you to feel safe and be yourself, um, open up about things, you know, hard things happening in your life. Again, like for me, that's not where I go, right? I'm not like, oh, I had a hard day. Like, let me, you know, hop on a Poshmark Live. <laughs> like, but, <laughs> you know, we can't continue to operate just based off of like, what would I do in this moment? Because there are so many different kinds of people out there. Um, so that's really cool. That's very special. So in the same regard, are there things that you prefer about traditional reselling over live selling? Like what are, I guess that's my way of saying, what are the cons of live selling in your opinion? Yeah. And I think that there is some, um, if you're sick, how are you going to do a live sale? Mm. If you're mm. on vacation for a week, how are you going to do a live sale? You know, mm -hmm. eBay and Poshmark, I can wake up in the morning and have sales. So mm -hmm. I, I saw a lot of people when live sales started to happen, go, I'm completely selling my, my eBay store and I'm solely doing this. And I'm like, that I personally, for me, that is not a calcul mm -hmm. like a, a good decision. Like that, in my mm -hmm. opinion, that's risky because mm -hmm. you could lose your voice. You could have COVID, you could have a car accident. I had one friend who just recently, she was bringing packages to the post office and I think it was like slippery and she fell and she broke her wrist oh, no. and she had to like delay her shows and she's a single mom and mm -hmm. there's just so many things like that and like she still has a store and everything I'm just using that mm -hmm. as like a yeah, yeah. you never know what can happen and mm -hmm. that's why I love to still have my stores is I don't you know even if I my kids are sick this week I can't do a live sale well I'm still gonna make money in my reselling business that's very true. And I think that's one of the things people love about reselling in general anyway, is just that within reselling, there's multiple streams of income through different platforms or, you know, live versus traditional. But just in general, it's scary. I get why people do it, but it's scary to put all your eggs in one basket, whether that basket is all live sales or and I did see people making those big proclamations as well when whatnot got huge when you know people are like i'm getting rid of my store like, but there i think the potential to burn out when all you do is live sales is yeah, also extremely out. great because you're yeah. dealing with a lot of quantity at once and you're doing that over and over again and that can that can really do a number on you so i think what you're yeah. advising is smart like if possible you know do both simultaneously but yeah. Yeah. If you can ma manage it, you know, when I, when that was happening where I was doing like three to five shows a week, uh, mm -hmm. I was down to 10 listings a day. Like that was what I could manage, you know, and after a while, um, I was pulling inventory from my, my inventory storage because I wasn't like my wholesale inventory was supposed to get here. And then it's like a month later and it still hasn't gotten here. So then I started to have items that were like still listed on my mm -hmm. stores that I hadn't pulled off yet and put them in live shows. And there was a couple of things that sold. And I was like, no, I just sold that in a live sale. This isn't yeah. good. So like, yeah. yeah, make sure whatever you can manage. Like there, there was a yeah. minute where it was a little crazy, but I, yeah. I finally <laughs> had to clean that up. I guess on that note, what do you think is the hardest thing about live sales? Um, kind of like what I said, the getting enough inventory, um, but mm. also you were kind of making a good point about like the burnout. Um, I am, I, apparently this is a thing, but I'm an extrovert introvert. Like I really oh, love, I am too. That, <laughs> I love being mean. around people, but uh -huh. I need to recharge. And yeah. I didn't realize it until one day I had done like a four hour show, maybe even longer. I kid you not, Becky. I think my husband thought there was something wrong with me. I just zoned. Like I was sitting in the kitchen. I was like, like I wasn't talking. I was just looking like I was dead. <laughs> so, yeah. and like during the time I loved it and I had a great time, but afterwards I was like, that took so much out of me. That was a lot yeah. of work. So I, I mean, think an element of that too. Yeah. But even for the most extroverted of people, talking cons like constantly for four hours especially if that's not yeah. something that you typically do because reselling is such an isolated occupation you're just like in right. a room by yourself <laughs> like you know like, you don't have to talk a lot like I feel like I could talk for hours but that's because I've had years of practice of like teaching right. or like that's I'm yeah. singing and talking all day but the average person to talk for four hours they're like 
oh my gosh, like it really does a number on your voice. And it's, it's a lot. And it, it is, it's, um, it's very extreme. It's not like a normal thing. So I completely understand why after like a four hour show, you would sit there and you're just kind of like in your own little world, like what just happened? Like, what, you know, was that real life? Cause that is, yeah. Don't ask me any decisions or anything. Like I just need a moment. Oh my gosh, no. Yes. Yes. Like there's a wall here. Do not cross it. Like I just need alone time for sure. Um, I had another question, but I lost it. Okay. Hold on. Oh, okay. So I hear a lot of people say about things like live sales, about just reselling in general, about YouTube. It's too late. There's not enough space for me. It's, it's too late for me to jump in and try it. Um, one, do you believe that when it comes to live selling? And then also, what advice do you have for people who are wanting to, you know, step into it for the first time? Yeah, I think that there's still absolutely a lot of room. In fact, Poshmark is still classified as their beta, like they're still in beta. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and that people are still trying to get access to Posh Show. So actually I'll, I'll put a little plug in for that, both on Whatnot and Poshmark. Uh, Whatnot, you do have to apply. And so sometimes there's a, a waiting period. I had to wait a month before I got approval to do live sales. And then you had to do a training before you could even start. Um, with Poshmark, if you're an ambassador one or ambassador two, there's a link where you can sign up. However, that has been really delayed for some people. It still takes a long time to get access. The fast track way to do that is go to a Posh and Coffee if they're virtual, which I've been doing virtual ones monthly for free. And basically they're, Poshmark's using it right now as like a training. So I teach you about Posh shows and then you'll get access to Posh shows afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, posh and uh, posh parties, posh fest, like any events where you're going to an event that Poshmark is hosting, mm -hmm. they've been doing a little branch off of teaching about posh shows. And then again, if you want access, you can get it that way. So that being said, like the customer pace is so big. Like I can yeah. be in Poshmark's like feed and looking through and like a hundred people are in this show. 300 people are in this show, 50 people are in this show, 20 people are in this show. And again, just because the numbers are all over the place doesn't mean that your items are not going to sell. I think that they can sell. You just have to stay consistent. And yeah. I think it's kind of with everything. You know, I did that with YouTube forever. I really wanted to go and get started. And it took me years to finally do it. And I had to hear that over and over again is that mm -hmm. it wasn't in the past. Of course, if you started sooner and been consistent, you might be at a different place now, but it's never too late to get started. People mm -hmm. are always exploding all over the place. And I would also say another caveat, because it's something else I've heard about in the um, live sale community is you do not need to have a large social media following to have a successful live mm -hmm. sale. A lot of people mm -hmm. thought, oh, well, they're marketing to the thousands of people that are on their Instagram or YouTube. And so that's why they have so many people in their shows. But I know people that have a consistent 100, 150, 200 people in their shows, and they've got like less followers than I do on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So it has nothing to do with that. What is the brands that you're selling? Are you personable? Are you entertaining? You know, like there's all of those things. That's why people will continue to watch your shows. And you know, for every huge seller that it seems like everyone loves them, there is no one that is university, universally loved, you know, like there's always going to be someone that's like, I cannot stand so-and-so who we all think mm -hmm. is like untouchable and we're like, what? And then, you know, your weird little self, you may cater to like the people out there who are just like you or who just find you funny yeah. or whatever. Um, again, I think it's just so important to show up very authentically yourself. And I think that helps prevent burnout a little bit better, too, instead of like, you know, putting forth a lot of energy trying to be something that you're not. And um, yeah. and even like, you know, the question a lot of people have is, do you have to be like super outgoing? I think we're used to the like, what's up, guys? <laughs> like, we're going to sell through all. And people are like, I don't I don't know how to do that. Yeah. And it's like, I think that's OK. Um, do you have thoughts for people who maybe are not even extrovert, extro, I can't talk, extrovert, introverts, but they're just literally introverted, like don't really like to be very outgoing or a little bit more reserved? Do you have any thoughts for people like that when it comes to live sales? Yeah. So two aspects to that. I've seen people do shows where they're soft spoken. They have really nice, like calming music in the background. Mm. And someone might go into that show and it's like, ah. <sighs> 
this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And of course, Mm -hmm. then they're going to buy something in that aesthetic. So you will find your people. Like we've, we've seen that on our, our YouTubes, our Instagrams. If you have social media, it's like you find your people. Mm -hmm. I I have a lot of people that follow me that are stay at home moms. And it's because Mm -hmm. they can relate to the stage of life that I am in. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's that aspect, but then secondly on Poshmark, which is different from whatnot, you can do silent auctions if you so choose to. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to say a word, you can mm-hmm. just have your items loaded. And when you start an item, so like if you pin it at the bottom so people can see what's coming next and then you you start the actual bidding for the item. If you have photos, so say it's like, ah, I have 10 items in my closet that I just want to sell in a live sale. You load those into your live show. When you start or when you pin that item, it pulls the photos through on the screen like a slideshow and Mm. you can talk. I've seen some people do silent auctions where they're still talking and engaging with the people in the comment section, but you just don't see their face. So Mm. again, I think that there is space for everyone, whether it's, you want to be on camera, off camera, quiet or loud and all the things. (laughs) Yeah. And that's very illuminating because I, like I said, I just, I don't know that I've sat in, on a single posh live show, maybe like a random one just to kind of see what it was like. It's just, it's, it's really not like my scene. Um, and when the silent ones came up, I was like, what in the what, you know, but like you said, like there are people who may prefer that over having to see someone's face or it's people who don't want to show their face. Like that's the best way for them to run a live sale. Um, yeah. all of the things there's space for all of the people. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So you had mentioned, um, this posh coffee thing and you host them every once in a while, do you have the date of your next one off the top of your head? So if people want to, yeah, I just did one last weekend. And so I will be doing one in June. Um, if you follow my YouTube or my Instagram, I will promote the date in the community tab on YouTube and then obviously post it also on my Instagram. So, um, I, I don't know. I think at this point, they, they were having us do it until June, but I don't know if mm. we could do it through the summer. I've really enjoyed doing one a month because it does allow people to get access if they want it. And like I said, yeah. it's totally free. Um, it's on Zoom. I have to create an event. Poshmark wants me to create an event on Facebook so they can kind of direct people to a certain place. Mm-hmm. But I've literally had people say, I don't have a Facebook. How am I supposed yeah. to do the Poshmark Coffee? It's on Zoom. The link is actually on Zoom. So you just register through the Zoom um, and then be able to have access to it. Awesome. And if I find out that um, you have like the direct link for your next one, I can put it in the description and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, those were all the questions I had. I did post something on my Instagram letting people know that I was going to be interviewing you about this very topic. And if anyone had questions, I invited them to leave them for you. So, we're going to just kind of do like rapid fire, although some of these are funny. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So, Um, M underscore O underscore Rogers asked, is it worth all the time overall versus listing and waiting for the sale? I believe so, because I think that I flip more items. So here's actually, we were asking about numbers earlier. Um, Hmm. I had 4,500 active listings on Poshmark and eBay last year because live sales. And like I said, I was pulling inventory and starting to like re audit my inventory. I'm down to, I think it's like 2,500 now on eBay and Mm -hmm. Poshmark. Uh, but I have sold over 3,500 pieces on Poshmark alone since I've been doing live sales. So I can absolutely flip product so much faster on live shows than just sitting and waiting for the right buyer to come. Mm -hmm. And with that, do you feel like you are selling items consistently for less than you would if you were waiting for the right buyer? Like how much, what's kind of like the percentage um, of a, discount, if you will, from your like original list price versus what you let go of it for in a live sale on average? It really depends because there's Mm -hmm. items that surprise me. And Mm -hmm. if the right people in the room want it, even if it's just two people that want it, I've had items that have sold over its retail price because people Mm -hmm. were doing a bid war. Um, I, you know, I, my, my closet was always a larger amount of quantity with a lower like 
flip because I was buying stuff at the outlets. So I was mm -hmm. like, I, you know, like I'll buy something that will sell for $15 because I bought it for a dollar something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same concept with the live shows, um, especially now that I am starting the bids at different prices. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I That's actually an analytic that I want to look at personally yeah. um, in my closet to determine you know, am I getting it for maybe $5 less than what I would have gotten if it had sat in weight in my closet? Or, you know, mm -hmm. what is, what is that number actually? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always kind of the fascinating piece to me. But you know, the people who are doing live sales, they still see the value in doing it, even if you're consistently letting go of pieces for less than you would the traditional way, because right. you're flipping so much more at one time. So the payout is greater, even if, the amount of profit per item is less. Um, and right. you just have to, you know, deal with that and see if you're okay with that. So no, that's very helpful. Well, um, and the caveat to that too, is when you are doing a live sale and people know that you have more items in your closet, I've had people go to my closet and buy stuff mm, there for larger amounts. Awesome. So it's also mm. a great way to market the closet that you already have. Mm. Oh, that's very cool. That's a cool um, perspective. So this is a wholesale company that I've worked with in the past. They actually left a question for you. So the company is Via Trading. I don't know. Have okay. you worked with them before? And you don't have to no, answer. If you so Via Trading asked, as a business, we would, we would like to know how we can support resellers better. So a wholesale company is asking, what can they do to support resellers more? I would have Give to know their business. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to know like their business model in order to kind of do any critiquing. Um, things off the top of my head, though, is the handling time. I have had mm -hmm. wholesalers that I've bought from, and I'm not kidding when I say it took a month to two months for the inventory to get to me. Yeah. It's really mm -hmm. difficult to try to run shows that it's like, I need inventory now um, mm -hmm. and buy something. Cause now I'm having to think, and this is where it started to get too overwhelming for me through mm -hmm. like the busyness part of our lives is I was having to think two months ahead. I was buying inventory in September for my Christmas season. And I mm -hmm. understand that like that's, that's corporate America. Like that's Walmart, that's target, but I'm just me as a small business. Yeah. Like I should be able to buy inventory and expect to get it within at least two weeks. Like yeah. if it's on the East coast, I get it. Cause it's going to take like five days to get to me, yeah. but that time was taking so much. So that would be one thing. And then I would mm -hmm. also say have a mixture of manifested and unmanifested, whether it's wholesale boxes or pallets. Again, I don't know their model. So maybe mm -hmm. they already are doing that. But sometimes people want to know exactly what they're getting. And so having a mm -hmm. manifested box where basically it's a spreadsheet that says everything that's going to be in there, people can find assurance in that and figure out how they like, okay, I can sell that stuff in a live sale. Whereas unmanifested, yes, it's probably going to be cheaper, but there is a little bit of risk to it. So yeah. Yeah, those are great tips. And, you know, I had one experience with this wholesale company many, many years ago. I liked it. It was like Macy's and Amazon pulls. The Macy's pull box was obviously a lot better. And they do a lot of stuff. So, you know, they do clothes, but they also do like tools and like COVID masks, and like just like all random things. So, you know, kind of what Ashley was speaking to earlier about find your niche, even when it comes to reselling and stick to that, because it's going to be easier. Um, I think that would be a good company to help you do that. Via Trading, I didn't even know this is your, I mean, there you go, free publicity for you. I do, I'm not sponsored. I don't have a link. I just, I'm speaking for one question. That's here. great. Yeah. Yes. Um, Thrifting Casey Style said, I got an email from Posh to do live sales. I want to do what not, but, and I'm nervous about Posh. I don't, get a lot of sales on Posh now. What do you think, Ashley? Would I get sales by going live? So I think in general, just they're experiencing slower sales. Like I think a lot yeah. of people are. Is turning to live sales the answer? I would say yes. Now, I'll be totally transparent. It was April of last year that I posted a YouTube video saying I am closing my Poshmark closet. The mm -hmm. algorithm was going bonkers and I was paying attention from January to March and I was putting the same amount of time in on eBay and Poshmark, consistent listings, consistent sharings, consistent like shipping my items. And I was watching eBay go up and Poshmark go down. And I was like, how is it that I'm putting in the same? And I even started putting more effort on Poshmark. I was like, 
I'm getting less money every single month, no matter how many items I'm adding in. So in April, I was like, I'm pulling back. I'm closing down my closet. I'm going to audit my inventory. I'm going to figure out maybe pivot. And instead of having these items that were selling for $15 or $20 or $25, maybe they're promoting more of the designer pieces or higher end pieces. And so my intentions with Poshmark was going to be start cross listing back from eBay, my items that I was, you know, like putting up for like $35 or more, because I was thinking maybe that's the problem. And I was going to play around with like key turns and different things like that. But then that's when live sales came into the picture. Mm -hmm. And I had already been loading some stuff back onto Poshmark. I was planning to go to Poshfest, which is why I got access to the beta when it first started. And when I started putting in live sales, on Poshmark. Now Poshmark makes more money than eBay. When mm. eBay was the one that was top dollar for me at the start of last year. And again, like I said, you have that promotional aspect where people are coming back to my closet because they know that I'm an active closet because they've seen me in live shows. So mm. they're more likely to buy from me because I've had customers to me come to me before going, man, I bought something. And after like 10 days, it got canceled because the person either donated oh. it or they didn't get back to me. Like there's a lot of frustration like that on Poshmark. So mm -hmm. uh, I do think that live sales has really helped bring people back to my closet. That's awesome. And I know back in the day, eBay had come out with uh, communication regarding, you know, getting on the live sale bandwagon. Would you be interested in doing, trying that out once they come out with their version of it? Yeah, actually, because live sales, in my personal opinion, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I think a lot of mm -hmm. people want to believe that this is a fad and that it's just going to go away. And if I just put my head in the ground, like it, it's going to disappear at some point and I don't ever yeah. have to like go live. But I do think that it's going to be here to stay because we're seeing success in foreign countries. Like we're actually, as America, we're behind in doing live sales. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of other countries doing this for many years and they've seen a mass amount of um, people just buying more because of the mm -hmm. lives, like you said, the referencing of QVC and infomercials and everything. Yeah. Uh, so because of that, like I want to continue to be a place on my YouTube channel where I can talk about the good and bad and indifferent about these different life selling platforms. There's one right now called, I think it's Jamble. And I just looking at that and seeing what that's about. Uh, someone mentioned that it's kind of like a Depop uh, newer brands like mesh together. And so I was like, okay, I could kind of see that. Like people are selling more vintage stuff over there or nineties or cottage core. Like if you have mm -hmm. a certain style that seems to be a really popular place to go, eBay mm -hmm. right now is focusing on specific categories. I want to say they're in designer purses and maybe sneakers and then like watches or jewelry or something. Mm -hmm. So they haven't hit my category yet, but absolutely yeah. I'm going to try it because I want to compare them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like eBay could be really exciting if they open it up to where you can do live sales and anyone from anywhere in the world could be a part of that, right? Like that's yeah. huge. Because like you said, this, not that live sales are the norm in other countries, but they're def it's definitely been around longer and um, it's definitely just a way of life for some people, like yeah. more people than in America. And so, man, yeah, if you're getting that international audience, like that's pretty huge. And so- um, now yeah. shipping would be a nightmare, <laughs> but um, yeah, it could be, it could be huge. All right. I have one more question from someone on Instagram. So they said, I can't fit mine in the little bubble. Cause you know, I said like, what questions do you have? So right. she, was she said, I was watching a whatnot show and the seller got mad because people weren't bidding her items up. So she basically scolded us, quit mid auction and said she'd redo the show at her normal time. What do you think about this? Is it kosher? I was very turned off and I probably won't watch any more of her shows. We have, you know, heard about bad attitudes and um, yeah. stuff like that on um, both Whatnot and Poshmark. This is not new, but it is something that's happening. What are your thoughts? So this is kind of where I, I feel like live show etiquette comes into play. Um, mm -hmm. There's definitely rules on a whatnot about certain things to try to help with the etiquette. Uh, but this was something I actually talked about in one of my videos on YouTube is, again, if you start an item and you're comfortable with it selling at that price, then you're you're starting at the right price. But if you're mm -hmm. going to start it at $3 and if it sells for $3, you're going to be upset. Don't start it at $3. Like yeah. the last thing someone wants to see is you go, oh, 
whatever and just put it back on there or like come on you guys like wake up where are you like that is so disrespectful that yeah. is not going to make anyone feel good you're not going to do a fear tactic to get people to purchase more from you you need to if this is something that you feel like you're going to struggle with i think literally practice or have an idea of what you're going to do when anything sells, have a smile on your face and go, thank you so much for your purchase. Or mm -hmm. if you feel comfortable saying their usernames, or if you know their name, like the, the recognition, people just feel good when you say that, mm -hmm. or you, if you even feel like maybe that sold for less than what you wanted it to have like a tagline that you're going to say like, Oh my gosh, you got a great deal on that. Or like, whoo, you got 50% off of what the retail is of that. Congratulations. Like find a way to flip it in a positive way mm -hmm. instead of going, hello, are you there? Wake up. Like yeah. no one is going to stay around for something like that. Um, uh, well, I, I take that back. Uh, like-minded attracts like-minded. So those kinds of people might be in the chat of those that are there. But yeah, that for me, my personal preference, I never want to make anyone feel bad about what they just purchased. That's that that's on me. I should have yeah. started that before. Yeah. Especially like you're saying, it's not their fault. Like you're the one that set the price there. So yeah. why are you all of a sudden being scolded now for purchasing it at the you know price that was listed? Yeah. And I think um, that is, something that people have to take into consideration if they're considering doing live sales is it is more interaction with people. And that is something that um, does give people anxiety, you know, just the idea of like, you know, potential conflict or like, what if someone's upset at me about like how I'm pricing this, they don't like my, you know, price start or the start price or whatever. Um, and those are things that you have to take into consideration as well. Um, you know, when you're just selling on eBay and Poshmark the normal way, yes, people can reach out and leave comments or, you know, I've had people be very nasty to me on eBay, but it's not in front of other people in a comment section. Um, so that's something you have to decide as well is, are you willing to put yourself in that position? And I think a lot of people are, but if you get really anxious about those kinds of things and maybe life selling isn't for you as well, I'm assuming, because right. I don't know, you do have to keep comments on, correct? Like there's no like turning the comments off feature. Yeah. Yeah, you can you keep comments on, but both Poshmark and whatnot have a way where you can clear a comment if someone is being mm. spammy, if they're harassing mm. you. You can also report people on both of them. Uh, so there's there is some protection around that, and that's why like on whatnot people will have like moderators to yeah. try to help like ease that. Um, I've had people come in and try to flirt with me, and it's really funny when my husband like head pops up in the corner. It's like, hi. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She, she, what, what are you doing? Like, and well, we have some fun with it. Like, or I'll just ignore those comments. And then he's in there. He's like, okay, reporting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just whatever you got to do. But yeah, you have to be prepared when you are live. There's just, there's going to be an array of different things that occur. And uh, actually I'll be completely frank. I did a posh and coffee and um, someone came in and basically like spammed my um, show my, my posh and coffee training with a porno and I was trying to get it off and I, I don't know zoom. And so I was having a hard time doing it. And like, I wanted just to cry because I was like, what if moms are <laughs> like their kids are right beside them and I can't make yeah. this stop. Like I was mm -hmm. more afraid for them. And, yeah. but everyone afterwards were like, you handed yourself well, Ashley, like yeah. you were able to get the reins back. But I was like, heart was racing. And I was like, I have never had anything like that happen in my life. And yeah. I feel so one wow. violated, but two, yes. like everyone else who had to deal with that, like, I feel for you and I'm so sorry, <laughs> but yes, like, obviously that's not going to happen in a live show, but you do, when you do any sort of live, put yourself out there and you have to know kind of how to handle that in those tense situations. Yes. And I, I think that too, is when people really see the real you, like it's, it's easy to act a certain way when everything is going according to plan and people are bidding and, you know, but when the porno shows up and, you know, like, or just whatever, like, that's when people sometimes fall in love with you more because they're like, oh my gosh, like, this is what she's like when things go off the rails. And just another opportunity for people to get to know you better and fall in love with you more. Sometimes it's better that things don't go perfectly as planned because it leaves opportunity for, you know, 
uh, just deeper engagement sometimes. Um, well, you have spent a lot of time with me, of which I'm very grateful and thankful because I love you and adore you and um, just think you're doing amazing things. I, I do personally think that there's a wrong way to do live sales. And that last comment kind of summed it up very nicely, I think, just right. not really, you know, but and I think you are a great example of what to do. You know, I think the things that people are upset about when it comes to hopping into live sales and feeling like they're being disrespected and those kinds of things, they're not going to get that from you. And back in the day when I did use to sit in on live shows, I did really enjoy it at the beginning of whatnot. Like I would yeah. go to a lot of shows and I met some really great people and, you know, but there were some shows that I was like, mm -mm, I'm not coming back here. Like yeah. this is just not, these are not my people. This is not my vibe. Exactly. This is not whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are at all curious about, what a good live show looks like and what I think you should leave a live show feeling like, I definitely do encourage you to check out Ashley. Like she said earlier, she is predominantly doing live shows on Poshmark right now, not so much whatnot, um, but you can see both of her handles for both whatnot yes. and Poshmark. You can get trained by her, you know, through these Posh and Coffees. You can reach out to her on Instagram, watch her videos on YouTube. Um, but she really is such a resource for all things reseller related. But I think especially in live sales, because there just aren't as many people who are as good at it as she is. Um, so I think, you know, she's a great resource for that. Um, Ashley, do you have any last thoughts, especially when it comes to live sales, but just really on on anything, on life, on <laughs> raising um, all the children that you raise, just things, anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things kind of just with our last conversation, what came to my mind of something I've been saying in my posh shows or like my posh and coffees is uh, lean into your weaknesses. So for example, mm. for me, I tend to think really fast and I tend to read really fast. And so sometimes I mispronounce brands or I will like, for example, recently I was um, looking at a bodysuit and I was like, oh, no, it looks like there's a deodorant stain on there. But instead of saying deodorant stain, I said donut and like everyone laughed and I laughed. And then for the remainder of the day, when I was referring to something with like some measurements of like the, the pits or something, someone would be like, oh, yeah, check out the, uh, the donuts and like. I know that that's a weakness of mine, but I just lean into that and like, let's have fun with that together. Yeah. Don't take myself too seriously in those situations. If I blend words together, I just laugh or I, in the middle of a show, I'll be like, oh, la, la, la. okay, hold on. Let me try that again. Like I just have fun with it. And I think that that really, again, brings that realness and authenticity to you. So don't be afraid. Like if you don't know how to say something, or even if you feel anxious, like it's okay to even be like, okay, I'm like, I'm here. And because people will root for you when they yes. see that and they, they want to cheer you on and see you win as well. Um, and the last thing I would say is if you guys ever come into my shows and you have questions, like don't feel like that's the wrong place to ask. Feel free to ask me. I'm totally okay to answer questions because sometimes you ask the question that someone else in that room might be wondering. And so mm -hmm. you can get it answered and, you know, at the same time. And also don't hesitate to message me on Instagram. I might send you a voice memo to answer because I might be in between like school runs and stuff like that. But I'm more than happy to help you guys. It's why we do what we do. You know, I'm sure Becky can attest to that. Like we love to help people win in this community. And so yeah. I'm a part of that. And I really love that I get to be a part of that. Yeah. And I, I think, um, I think a lot of people in our community feel that way. Like there's space for everyone. There's enough mm -hmm. inventory for everyone. There's enough customers out there for everyone. Um, I, I genuinely believe that you fall into that camp. I, I like to think that I do. There are people who don't, you know, and so I, I get like people being leery of like, mm, I don't know who I can trust, but I really can't attest to Ashley being one of the good ones. <laughs> like just one of the ones that really wants to see people win because mm -hmm. she understands that by them winning doesn't mean that she loses. Like we can all win together, you know? So oh, yeah. um, Absolutely. Yes, like definitely reach out to Ashley. If um, you have questions about live sales, don't reach out to me because I know nothing as I have proven <laughs> in, the, like, in this interview. Like I know nothing about what is you know new and up and coming with live sales. Like, but I will say like, this has made me kind of want to like maybe do my first posh live show, even if it is to kind of, you know, offload some of my older inventory um, and just like see, how it goes, you know, because mm -hmm. you have to try something before you knock it, before you want to yeah. speak crap about it or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I think it's definitely worth trying at least a few times. Mm -hmm. So. 
thank you so much for your time and just for all of the amazing advice that you shared. I think that it's going to be really helpful for people. So we will end it there. Definitely make sure that you now head over to Ashley's channel. <laughs> make sure that you subscribe over there and check out some of her videos, some of the trainings like um, she said she's created over there for you mm -hmm. on how to be successful at doing live sales and you really will be learning from the best. So definitely make sure you go over there. Thank you for your time, Ashley. Thank and you. yeah, we'll see you in the next Bye. one. Bye. <laughs>